Welcome to the worship service for Pleasant Valley Church. I'm so happy that you're joining us today from wherever you are, and I hope that you had a great Mother's Day last week. Well, we are excited for the service that we have today, and as I said, thank you for, for joining us. We just want you to remember, there's no substitute for gathering together in a local body, which is the church. And so wherever you are, we hope that you are connected with a Bible-believing, Jesus-loving church. And if you're not, find one. And if you're in the Cleveland area, we would love for you to join us when we come back to worship together. But in the meantime, we're thankful for the technology and we're happy that you are watching with us today. Well, let me just share a few announcements with you as we get started. First of all, I want to let you know that our preschool is excited for the next school year. And you can actually go to our website and you can click the Kids and Crowns button at www.joinusatpvc.org. And we would love to take a phone call from you and you can learn about our preschool and actually enroll your kids for the 2020-2021 school year. Uh, so don't miss out. Space is limited and we'd love for you to call this week. Next thing that I want to tell you about is this. We are excited about a ministry opportunity called Bless Every Home. And I previewed this a little bit next week and you are going to hear more about this in the coming days and coming weeks. But we want you to get ready to pray for your neighborhood. More will come and stay tuned. Also, I just want to let you know that this Wednesday night is our monthly food distribution. If you don't know this already, we partner with the Cleveland Food Bank and we help provide fresh produce to hundreds of people. And so we'd love, if you want to volunteer, we'd love for you to come by about three o'clock and help serve those who are in need. And if you are watching and you're in need, we'd love for you to come by and we'd love to help you out. Well, those are just a few of the things that are happening here at Pleasant Valley Church. Be sure to check our website, and if you don't receive our weekly email update, we'd love to get you connected with that as well. If you're watching on Facebook, you can just click the Contact Us button, and that'll take you to a form that you can fill out, and we'd love for you to reach out to us so that we can reach out to you. Well, as I said, we've got a great worship service in store for you. Thank you for joining us, and we look forward to seeing how God's going to use this next hour in our lives. Well, we are excited to gather again and worship through song. Jesus is the reason that we are here, and Jesus is the reason that we sing. Let's sing together. We've waited for this day. We're gathered in your name, calling out to you. Your glory like a fire, awakening desire to burn our hearts with truth. You're the reason we're here. You're the reason we're singing. Open up the heavens, we want to see you. Open up the floodgates. A mighty river flowing from your heart, filling every part of our praise. Your presence in this place, your glory on our face, we're looking to the skies. Descending like a cloud, you're standing with us now, Lord, unveil our eyes. You're the reason we're here. You're the reason we're singing. Open up the heavens, we want to see you. Open up the floodgates, a mighty river flowing from your heart, healing every part of our praise. We sing. Open up the heavens, we want to see you. Open up the floodgates, a mighty river flowing from your heart, filling every part of our praise. 
show us show us your glory show us show us your power show us show us your glory lord show us show us your glory show us show us your power show us show us your glory lord open up the heavens we want to see you open up the floodgates a mighty river flowing from your heart filling every part of our prayers we sing open up the heavens we want to see you open up the floodgates a mighty river flowing from your heart filling every part of our prayers That's a great song, isn't it? When you think about it, open up the heavens, we want to see you. Uh, we probably think that's what's going on with a lot of people right now. <laughs> Not necessarily the heavens opening up with all the rain that we've been having lately, but people want to see Jesus. And as we begin to transition what will hopefully be into a time where we are gathering back here as a group of people who love Jesus, we want to let you know, perhaps if you're not connected with the church, that you are welcome to church. And so this is a new sermon series that we're going to start talking about church and what it's supposed to be like. You know, you think about comebacks, right? And the church has, so to say, been on a little bit of a hiatus. I mean, we've still been very active, don't get me wrong, but we've not been gathering together. And so just like businesses are eager to open up and schools are eager to open up and families are eager to get back to a different routine, the church is excited to welcome people back into its buildings in the coming weeks or months, wherever you are. So we're excited for a comeback. And in order for that comeback to happen, we want you to be prepared to be welcomed to church. Now, think about comebacks just for a minute, right? We love comebacks, and we love comeback stories. I think of the Chuck Taylor Converse All-Star Shoes, right? I mean, this has been one of the top-selling sneakers for over 90 years. But you know what? Do you remember back maybe in the 80s and, and the 90s where the shoe kind of faded because Converse was going through some transitions? And then in the 2000s, 2010s, and, and recently, the shoe has been so popular. In fact, for over 90 years now, it's been one of the most popular shoes. Two of my kids even have their favorite pair of Converse All-Star shoes. Or you think about some other comebacks that, that we love. Maybe you heard this this week. Did you know that Mike Tyson is, is maybe planning a comeback? Wow, Iron Mike. I remember him when I was a kid and, and just the dominance that he had in the sport and the way we were all just flabbergasted when Buster Douglas beat him. Wow. But if you've seen some of the videos, Iron Mike looks ready for a comeback. In fact, one news reporter said, this is just what America needs. And he was talking about it in a positive context. Now, here in Cleveland, we love comebacks, right? I mean, after all, think of LeBron coming back to Cleveland and just the excitement that that brought to the city and the state of Ohio. Or, yes, absolutely, we are still living in 2016 when the Cleveland Cavaliers came back from 3-1 to one down to those Golden State Warriors. What a comeback! One for the ages is what they say. Well, I tell you what, I think the church is ready for a comeback like no other time, and we want you to be a part of it. But we also understand that, you know, if you've been watching online, it's, it's probably felt pretty safe to you, right? I mean, you log in to, to your Facebook account, or you click onto YouTube, and you've got your comfort of anonymity right there, where nobody has to see what you're watching, or when you're watching, or even why you're watching. But God's been at work in your heart, and now as the church is ready to open up its doors again here in a few weeks, hopefully, we want you to experience the church the way it was meant to be experienced. And so, welcome to church. 
That's what this series is looking to do, is to help you understand what the church is supposed to be about and what we're supposed to be like. Now understand me clearly, no church is a perfect church. So if you're looking for, for, for perfection, you aren't going to find it. But here's, as we begin this, a simple key idea that I have for you. And here's the key idea. God wants you to be part of the church. Now think about it. Businesses all around the world want you to be part of their customer clientele. Maybe the gym that's getting ready to open up is, is getting ready to run a special so that you can come and be a part of that group there at the fitness center. Of course, you know, businesses, they want you to be a part of their customer clientele so that you can be a part of their marketing and their research and more importantly, their sales. But the church isn't like that. The church does, however, want you to be a part of what's going on here but for completely different reasons, and what we like to say, eternally significant reasons. Well, let's think about this for a moment. Uh, God wants you to be part of the church. And here's a question that I have for you. As you're sitting there in the comfort of your home, or you're watching on your phone, or maybe you are getting brave and you're casting it on the TV for the whole family to see. But here's my question. When you think of the word church, what comes to mind? I ask this question a lot of times to, to people who are interested in Pleasant Valley Church. I say, what comes to mind? And a lot of people think of words like helpful. You know, the church is supposed to help people in the community. A lot of people think of uh, a group of people who, who love God. And that's absolutely right. You know, the church is a group of people that loves God. And, of course, if we're going to be honest, right, a lot of people have a negative connotation when they think of the word church. Maybe they had a bad experience as a kid, or, or maybe you're part of a church where all they do is send you letters. Instead of asking how you're doing, they just ask for you to, to give money, and they wonder, where have you been, and where has your check been? Well, I'm sorry if you've had an experience like that. This leads us to our first point, and here it is. Instead of defining the church by our views or experiences, we need to define the church based on the Bible. And doesn't that make sense, right? Some of us have had great experiences in churches. Some of us have had, and I'm sorry, horrible experiences in churches. But instead of just going off of everyone else's experience, right? Because we've all been to maybe that restaurant that got great reviews and we're like, how did they get four stars? Or we've all went to that movie that got only two stars or got a low score on Rotten Tomatoes and we went and we watched it and it was awesome, right? We have to experience these things for ourselves. But when it comes to the church, we actually need to go to the Bible and understand what it says about the church. Because as we welcome you to church, and as those who have been part of the church come back to church, we all can use a good refresher about what church is supposed to be, according to the Bible. Well, let's just look at a few things here. First of all, I want you to see that the church is the community that is identified by its love for Jesus. Now think about that. Okay, a lot of things are identified by, by different parameters or, or different things. But the church, first and foremost, is a community that is identified by its love for Jesus. If you go to the book of Acts, okay, and if you're not very familiar, that's okay. Just look up on your device. Maybe go to a website like BibleGateway.com and you can type in the word Acts and it will take you to the book of Acts. It's actually the fifth book in the New Testament. And if you read to chapter 1, which is phenomenal, and you go to chapter 2, which is amazing, what you see is you see the church actually growing in Acts chapter 2. And there towards the end of the chapter, we come to Acts chapter 2, verse 41. And I'm going to read what it says here. It says, So those who accepted the message were baptized, and that day about 3,000 people were added to them. Well, naturally, a couple questions. What message? It was the message that Jesus spoke. We call this the good news, the gospel. And what the gospel basically says, and you can actually read it in Acts chapter 2, but what it basically says is you need to believe in Jesus. You need to become a follower of Jesus. You repent of your sins, become a follower of Jesus, and that's what it means to be a Christian. 
Now, who's Jesus, right? Just a quick primer here. Jesus, the Son of God, the second person of the Trinity. He's the one who died on the cross. Good Friday. Rose from the grave three days later. Easter. Christians all around the world believe Jesus to be God himself, the Son of God, who died on the cross to forgive you and me of our sins. And so there are a lot of people who don't believe that, right? They're not Christians. But for the people who do believe that, they are Christians. And so the church is a community that is identified by its love for Jesus. And you kind of have to know what a group stands for before you become a member of it. And what we stand for here at Pleasant Valley Church is who Christians all around the world stand for, and that's Jesus. And they're defined by their love for Jesus. And so when we talk about a community of people who are identified by their love for Jesus, we're just talking about folks like you and me, everyday people who love Jesus and have decided to follow him. Now, the second thing that I want you to know about the church as we welcome you to church and we get ready for a comeback is this. The church gathers to encourage one another. Man, have you needed some encouragement during the last couple months? I know I have. And I've been encouraged by my kids, by my wife, by the church family. And I've received notes in the mail that have said, you know, things like, we're praying for you, Pastor Paul. I've received phone calls asking how, how my wife is doing because she works at a hospital. When I talk to people, it seems like everybody always asks about my kids. And, and that's encouraging. And you know who those questions are coming from? People in the church. And you might be saying, well, that's just because you're the pastor. <laughs> no, no, it's not just because I'm the pastor. Because I hear stories of this happening with almost everybody in the church. And that's what's so encouraging. And so if you're looking for a place of encouragement, I want you to know that the church is supposed to be a place where people gather to encourage one another. Did you know in the Bible there was a church in a city called Thessalonica? And as the Apostle Paul was writing to them, he actually told them, he said this, he said, so he said, therefore, encourage one another. <laughs> Very simple, right? The church is supposed to encourage one another. Well, let's look at a third thing that the church does. Do you know the church is supposed to engage in doing good? Now, what do I mean by that? Well, remember when I ask you what comes to mind when you think of the word church? A lot of people think the church is supposed to be an organization that does good in its community. And so maybe someone is out of work right now, like so many people are. Well, the church can be a place where we help people financially. Sure, absolutely. You know, I just told you about a food distribution that we're going to have <clears throat> in partnership with the Cleveland Food Bank. That's doing good in our community. We were approached to try to help meet a need, and that's what we're doing. <laughs> you know, I've had people here in the church make masks for people when we come back so people in the church can have a mask. People have written letters, they've made phone calls, and when we're able to, or at least when we were able to, we'd go to the hospital or the nursing home and, and visit others. And do you know even one family has taken on the encouragement role of, of using sidewalk chalk and kind of chalk surprising different families? It's been a huge success. And that's what the church is supposed to do. We're supposed to engage in doing good. Now let's back up and think big picture here, right? There's been a lot of people who have been part of the church who have done a lot of wonderful and good things. Let me just go through this list a little bit. First of all, Matthew chapter 16. Do you know what Jesus said to his disciples? And this was before the church actually began in the book of Acts. But this is what he said. He said, And I tell you that you are Peter, and on this rock I will build my church, and the gates of Hades will not overcome it. That's pretty powerful, right? I mean, Jesus is saying the gates of hell will not overcome the church. And so the church, we talk about doing good. The church pushes back forces of evil. Think about that for a moment because that's really big. What are some forces of evil that we've seen? Well, let me just list a few names and we'll talk about this. First of all, think of William Wilberforce. You know what he was famous for. He was famous for the abolition of the slave trade. 
Man, he lingered for years and years trying to get rid of the slave trade. And you know why? Because he loved Jesus. And he was part of the church. And he thought the church should be against slavery. And the church should work to abolish the slave trade. And through his work, in part, it happened. Think of someone even more recently, right? Let's fast forward here in America. Martin Luther King Jr. Martin Luther King Jr. loved Jesus. Martin Luther King Jr., part of the church, mobilized the church, fought for the church, told the church they should fight for the civil rights because all men are created equal, right? What was the force of evil that was being pushed back? Similar to William Wilberforce pushing back slavery. What did Martin Luther King do? He pushed back those ignorant and sinful ideas that black people were less than white people. That's a great thing. He loved Jesus and he fought for civil rights. Even think modern day. You can even just go to even last month, New York City. What was being set up in New York City? Makeshift hospitals. By what organization? Samaritan's Purse. Samaritan's Purse, a Christian organization that loves Jesus and organizes Christians, mobilizes the church in order to do good. Wonderful organizations like this all over the world, part of the church Big C, but all these people who are helping, most of them part of local churches like Pleasant Valley Church or a church near you. We could think of Samaritan's Purse. We're part of the Southern Baptist Convention here at this church. Baptist Disaster Relief, the third largest disaster relief agency in America. We could think of other Christian ministries like Compassion International or Living Water. These are great organizations who are filled with people and they're surrounded around their love for Jesus Christ and engaging and doing good. The church that you want to be a part of should be a church that loves Jesus and engaged and doing good and pushing back the forces of evil. You know, you think about this, right? I mean, these are crazy times and it's so sad what came out in the news just in the last couple weeks about Ahmad Arbery, right? I mean, you think of what's going on here, and we still have these, these evil forces of, of racism and vigilante justice still prevalent in our society. And I tell you what, the church should be on the forefront of calling for justice to be done. Now, I'm not just calling for a social gospel, so to say. I'm talking about people who love Jesus, having the heart of Jesus to make changes for Jesus. That's what the church should be doing. Well, fourth, the church is supposed to make Jesus known. That's right. This is one of the reasons why our tech team has been working so hard to get messages like this out and music like our worship team does out to living rooms like yours. Why? Because we want to make Jesus known. Do you know at the end of the first book in the New Testament, Matthew in chapter 28, Jesus told those who followed him and loved him, Go, therefore, and make disciples of all nations, baptizing them in the name of the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. And I am with you always, even to the end of the age. Do you know if a church isn't engaged in making Jesus known, there's an issue there. We want to make Jesus known by, by being inviting to you and saying, welcome to church. But we also want to make Jesus known by, by going into places and letting people know that we do these good things and we push back the forces of evil because we love Jesus. This is the community. This is the church that's focused around the love of Jesus and our commonality of all being sinners and all being forgiven of our sin through the work and person of Jesus Christ. Now, I know I covered a lot there, and there's so much more that I could cover, but you probably have a question right now, maybe. Yeah, well, if you don't, I'm going to ask you one. And here's the next question I want to ask you, and it's this. How do I become part of a church? How do I become part of the church? Because this is the reality I think we live in. You're sitting there in your living room, and you're saying, okay, I, I get it. Uh, a church loves Jesus. You know what? And a, a church engages in doing good. And a church is supposed to make Jesus known. And, and first and foremost, a church is a community that's identified by its love for somebody who died for them and forgave them of their sins, that person being Jesus. 
Well, how do I become part of a church? That's a great question. And when we come back, we're going to talk about that. It's not as difficult as it sounds. But like I said, as we prepare to say welcome to church, we want to help prepare you now for when you come in a few weeks or later. Let's pray. Father, to you be the glory. Thank you for what the church is supposed to be. I know I covered that very quickly, and there's so much more we could talk about. But I thank you that the church is first and foremost about Jesus, the one who died for the forgiveness of our sins, the only Son of God. And that if we believe in Jesus and we follow Jesus, our sins are forgiven and we are part of the community that is a follower of Christ. So Father, I pray that so many more people would experience this. And as we get ready for a comeback, I pray that so many people will experience that love that Christians all around the world have experienced. To you be the glory. Amen. Stay tuned. We've got more great things coming. In fact, for you kids, right now, we've got a special thing from PVC Kids and one of our favorite teachers, Miss Kim. Stay tuned. And here's a video from Miss Kim about Beatitudes. I'll see you shortly. Hi guys, Miss Kim here. I miss you guys and I thought it would be fun if we could do a craft together. So today we are going to make a B and we are going to learn about the B attitudes. Uh, you've heard the saying, busy as a bee, always working are the bees. Whether they're protecting the hive, protecting the queen, or getting food, they are always busy. Well, some of you know my son Aaron is a beekeeper. Well, and I thought it would be fun if he went outside and got a picture of his bees for you to show you how busy they actually are. So check this video out. Well, as you can see from the video, the bees are all buzzing around keeping busy. Well, we need to be busy too while we are safe at home. So let's look at Matthew 5, 13, and I'm going to tell you about the Beatitudes. Jesus went up to the mountain with his disciple and taught them some things that they can do. Um, each of the Beatitudes start with the word blessed, which means happy. So number one, blessed are the poor in spirit. Jesus wants us to be humble. Second, blessed are those who mourn. We should be obedient and sad about our sin because Jesus doesn't like it. Third, blessed are the meek. We should be gentle and always put others' needs in front of our own. Fourth, blessed are those who hunger and thirst for righteousness. Jesus wants us to read our Bible and learn about him and be more knowledgeable. Number five, blessed are the merciful. We should be kind and forgive others. Six. Blessed are the pure in heart. We should be good and do things that are right, even if our friends don't think they are. Seven, blessed are the peacemakers. Jesus wants us to get along with those around us, and we should be a peacemaker. Eight, blessed are those who are persecuted for righteousness. God wants us to tell others about him and be a disciple. So, we are going to make a bee craft today that's going to remind us of some of the bee attitudes. And today I chose be kind and be a peacemaker on this bee. So the first thing you're gonna need is a toilet paper tube and a piece of white paper or yellow paper. If you don't have yellow, just color it uh, a white piece of paper yellow. And it's four and a half by six. All I did was lay the tube down and measure. After I had my yellow paper, I drew on it with black crayons, the stripes for my bee. Now, we're just gonna take glue, we're gonna cover all the edges, and we're gonna put an X in the middle. And now we're gonna wrap it around our toilet paper too. Make sure you press the edges down so that they seal. All right, now we're going to put the antennas on. So we'll need glue on each of those. And we're going to stick those right inside. And there's the other one. 
I'm gonna stick this one inside. So now you have the antennas and all we need are the wings. And I just cut two ovals with a little tip at the edge. And I wrote on these, be kind and be humble. So we are gonna put glue on those. And you just need them at the corners, at the edges. And we're gonna stick that down. And we're gonna stick that down. So here is my second B, and it only took a matter of a few minutes. So remember the B attitudes. Take some time with your parents and go over them. Again, that's Matthew 5, and choose one of the skills that you can work on today. Thanks, and I hope I get to see you all at church soon. Bye. Oh, I've heard a thousand stories of what they think you're like, but I've heard a tender whisper of love in the dead of night, and you tell me about your peace and that I'm never alone. You're a good, good father. It's who you are. It's who you are. It's who you are. And I'm loved by you. It's who I am. It's who I am. It's who I am. Oh, I've seen many searching for answers far and wide but i know we're all searching for answers only you provide because you know just what we need before we say a word you're a good good god to you are You are perfect in all of your ways. You are perfect in all of your ways to us. You are perfect in all of your ways. You are perfect in all of your ways. You are perfect in all of your ways to Love so undeniable, I can hardly speak. Peace so unexplainable, I can hardly think as you call me. Deeper still as you call me. Deeper still as you call me, deeper still into love, 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 you're a good, good father. Father, it's who you are, it's who you are, it's who you are, and I'm loved by you, it's who I am, it's who I am, 
It's who I am. First John one, seven to nine says, if we walk in the light as he himself is in the light, we have fellowship with one another, and the blood of Jesus, his son, cleanses us from all sin. If we say we have no sin, we are deceiving ourselves, and the truth is not in us. If we confess our sins, he is faithful and righteous to forgive us our sins and to cleanse us from all unrighteousness. Are you hurting and broken within? Overwhelmed by the weight of your sin? Jesus is calling. Have you come to the end of yourself? Do you thirst for a drink from the well? Jesus is calling. Come to the altar, the Father's arms are open wide. Forgiveness was part with the precious blood of Jesus Christ. your regrets and mistakes come today there's no reason to wait Jesus is calling bring your sorrows and drink them for joy from the ashes a new life is born Jesus is calling Come to the altar, the Father's arms are open wide. Forgiveness was bought with the precious blood of Jesus Christ. Oh, come to the altar, the Father's arms are open wide. But where the precious blood of Jesus Christ. Oh, what a Savior! Isn't He wonderful? Sing hallelujah. Christ is risen. Bow down before Him, for He is Lord of all. Sing hallelujah, Christ is risen. Oh, what a Savior. He wonderful Sing hallelujah Christ is risen Bow down before Him For He is Lord of all Sing hallelujah Christ is risen
bear your cross as you wait for the crown tell the world of the treasure you found I hope you enjoyed that time with Miss Kim. She does such a great job teaching children about Jesus. And when you are part of a good church, that's part of what the church does, is they love on everybody and encourage everybody in the church. Well, we left off with a question in the last segment. And the question was this, how do I become part of a church? Because I told you a little bit about what a church should be, well, the natural next question is, how do I become part of a church? Well, it's actually not as complicated as it might seem. Uh, you don't need to pay your membership dues. You, you don't need to have a secret handshake or anything like that. Uh, you just really need to start coming is the first thing. And I want you to understand that everyone is invited to be a part of the church. Everyone's invited. The doors are open to anybody who wants to come in and be part of the community of people who love Jesus. Now, let's think about this for a little bit. What do you need to do once you come to the church? Well, as you come to the church, I want you to have a few things in mind. First of all, let's go back to what the Bible says about the church, right? Because we don't want to be filled with our own opinions. We want to be filled with what the Bible says. Acts 16, verse 5. Look at what it says here. So the churches were strengthened in the faith and grew daily in numbers. Well, how do you grow daily if you're pushing people out? You don't. So think of the church there in the first century. And what they were doing was they were loving Jesus. They were encouraging one another. They were pushing back the forces of evil. They were doing good in their community. And what was happening was people saw that and they said, well, hey, What's going on with this group of people who, who claim to love Jesus? And so they learned about Jesus. And more people learned about Jesus. And more people became part of the community which is called the church. You know, the other thing that's, that's true about the church, and this is something I absolutely love, we are all on the same playing field. Perhaps you've been in a situation where you felt disadvantaged. You don't need to feel that way when you come to church. At least you shouldn't. You know why? Because once again, what does the Bible say? Galatians 3, 28. There is no Jew or Greek, slave or free, male or female, since you are all one in Christ Jesus. Now think about that for a moment. You know, here in Cleveland, we've got east side and west side, right? It doesn't matter if you're an east sider or a west sider. You're invited to come and learn about Jesus and receive forgiveness for your sins. You think about other things that are true in our culture, right? It doesn't matter what ethnicity you are. It doesn't matter what race you are. It doesn't matter if you're a male or a female. But what happens is we all share things in common. One, and this is a bad one, we are all sinners. Because the Bible says all have sinned and fallen short of the glory of God. That's right. Whether you're black or white or whether you're from Asia or India or wherever the case might be. You are a sinner. But here's the beautiful thing. When you accept Jesus Christ as your Savior and you receive forgiveness of sins, this is what Galatians 3.28 is saying. You are all one in Christ Jesus. So as you come to the church and we say, welcome to church, it doesn't matter what you look like, it doesn't matter where you're from, you are invited to receive Jesus Christ as your personal Savior. Now, think about this here for a little bit. We're talking about everyone is invited to be a part of the church. Well, Anyone can attend at any time. That's right. You can come any Sunday that you want when our doors are open. And if our doors are open on Wednesday, you can come. If they're open on Monday, Tuesday, Thursday, Friday, Saturday, you can come and, and be a part of what's happening in the church. Now, there are a few things, though, okay? Just like if you go down to your local Costco, you can't just walk in. You have to have the card, right? And you have to pay a fee for that card. Well, Guess what? You don't need a card to get into the church. You don't need to pay a fee to come into the church. But just as those two things are true of every Costco member, there's something that needs to be true of every person who's a member of the church. And it's this. You need to become a follower of Jesus. 
Now, I'm not talking out of both sides of my mouth here. You said, well, Paul, you just said anybody can come. That's right. Anybody can attend. You can come and sing the songs with us, and you can read the Bible with us, and you can listen to a message like this with us. But if you want to become a member of the church, you need to become a follower of Jesus Christ. Because that's that commonality that we all have. And that's the difference that separates people who are Christians from people who are Christians. It's a love for Jesus. Do you know one of the reasons we gather is not just to encourage each other, but it's to be reminded of God's grace in our lives? We all are in need of grace. That's that unmerited favor from God towards those who deserve His wrath. And so when I come to church and I see another person who loves Jesus and I see another person who loves Jesus, you know what I'm reminded of? The grace that I've received that they've received as well. And so if you can come to the church, but if you want to be a part of the church, you need to become a follower of Jesus. You know, one of the ways that people identify as a follower of Jesus is by being baptized You can't see it right now, but behind this backdrop here, we've actually got what we call a baptistry. Kids like to refer it as the church pool. (laughs) And what happens there is when you become a follower of Jesus and you receive forgiveness of your sins and, and, and you decide that you want to commit your life to following Jesus, the church has a way in which we identify people who want to become a follower of Jesus. They get baptized. Now, the way we do this at the church and Once again, going to the way the Bible says is we actually fill up the church pool. (laughs) And we actually baptize people. In other words, we have them go under the water and they come back up out of the water. And that symbolizes to the church that this person loves Jesus, has received forgiveness for their sins, and wants to be part of our church family. So anyone can attend, but you do need to become a follower of Jesus. And then the next thing that you do is you engage in the life of the community. You know, nothing worse, there's nothing worse than than having a membership and never using it. It just doesn't make sense. You know, why would I pay, you know, a couple hundred dollars a year year to go to the rec center if I never go? Why would I pay hundreds of dollars for a pass to Cedar Point if I never go? Well, think about the church. If you are a follower of Jesus and you've received forgiveness of your sins and you claim to be a Christian, why wouldn't you engage in the community? Why wouldn't you engage in the life of the church? Why wouldn't you connect with other people who love Jesus on a regular basis? Do you know what the book of Acts says? Once again, in chapter 2, verse 42, I can't emphasize how important this chapter is for understanding the church. Well, here's what the book of Acts says in chapter 2, verse 42. They devoted themselves to the apostles' teaching, to the fellowship, to the breaking of bread, and to prayer. Four simple things that people who loved Jesus did when the church first started. They learned about God. That's what it means to devote yourself to the teaching of the apostles. That's the Bible. That's what we're talking about. When you go to a church, you're going to learn the Bible. At least if you're in a good church, you will. And that's what happens when you come to Pleasant Valley Church. When we say welcome to church, you can be sure that you're going to learn something from the Bible. Well, what does it mean to the fellowship? Well, that's the gathering. That's spending time with other Christians. That's camaraderie. That's fellowship. That's the community. And so, What did people do who became followers of Jesus? They hung out with other followers of Jesus. What about the breaking of bread? (laughs) Now, churches are long known for having wonderful meals together. And that's kind of what it refers to. But it also refers to the Lord's Supper or communion, where we drink a small cup of juice and we have a small piece of bread to remind us of Jesus' great love for us. And the grace that we've received as Christians. And to prayer. That's right. A church should pray together. A church should talk to God together. 
and Christians should pray together and they should talk to God together so that we can understand what God wants for our lives and so that we can encourage one another and so that we can seek God's direction for different things that are happening and what we should do. We pray together. So think about this for a moment. Everyone is invited to be a part of the church, but you need to attend. You need to become a follower of Jesus, and you need to engage in the community. And it all leads up to this, and here's the takeaway. As you prepare to come back to church, I want you to prepare your heart to return for the right reasons. And we've talked about several of them, what the church is and how you become connected with the church. Over the next few weeks, we're going to dive a little bit more into this because I want you to have a wonderful understanding of what you should expect because I want you to come to the church. And I realize how you might feel. Maybe you haven't been to church for a long time and you're not really sure if you're going to be comfortable walking in through the doors and meeting all these new people that you don't know. I just want to encourage you that there are better things ahead if you take that first step. You know, I remember when I was six years old. When I was six years old, my, my mom moved back to Dayton, Ohio. You see, we had been living with family out of state for a few years. And I started kindergarten at Frankfurt Elementary School. I finished kindergarten at Monticello Elementary School in Dayton, Ohio. I still remember the first day when my mom took me to school. I met the principal. The principal kindly walked me down to the kindergarten classes. I peeked into the kindergarten classes and I was shy and I was scared. But you know what I did? I went. Now, I wasn't quite ready. The principal actually invited me if I wanted to stay for the rest of the day. <laughs> I didn't want any of that. No way. But you know what? I went back. And I made some great friends. And I had a great sense of community. And you know what else we did? We found a church. And we didn't know a lot of people in the church. We had, we had been to the church before, but we had left the church. And there were new people. And there were new things happening. But... It was good. And that church did some wonderful things in my life, in my family's life, and it is still impacting me today. I want you, I know how you might be feeling. You might be feeling uncomfortable. You might not be sure if this is where you belong. Well, I want to encourage you, come to church. Come and be a part of it and see what God can do. Our doors are all open and we want to say, Welcome to church. Let's pray. Father, to you be the glory. Thank you so much for the church. And I pray for those people who are watching now. Maybe they are Christians. And, and I pray that as they come back to church here in a few weeks, that this will just serve as a great reminder of what we are supposed to do. And Father, for those people out there who, who aren't Christians, First and foremost, I pray that they will turn to you and become followers of you. That they'll just recognize that they're sinners and that they will, they will pray to you and commit their lives to following you. And, and Father, I know they might still be confused, but would they reach out to us so we can help them become a Christian? And but Father, in a few weeks, when we hopefully open up our doors, I pray that there will be many people here whom we don't know, but you've brought here so they can know you and be a part of this church. Father, we're ready for a comeback, and we want it to be about Jesus. To you be the glory. Amen.
enthroned in the Father's love and destined to die poured out for all mankind God's only Son perfect and spotless one He never sinned suffered as if he did all authority every victory is yours all authority every victory Light in this broken land. All of the blood of the Lamb and the word of our testimony everyone overcome we will overcome by the blood of the Lamb and the word of our testimony everyone overcome Savior, worthy 
Well, I hope you've enjoyed the service today. And like I said, we've got a few more weeks where we're going to say welcome to church. And I hope you've enjoyed the songs. I hope you've enjoyed the prayers that we've had. I hope you enjoyed the time with Miss Kim. And wow, what a great song they just sang. It was the band sang Overcome. And I tell you what, that song speaks so much of what this is about, what church is about. It's receiving forgiveness for your sins through Jesus Christ. In fact, I want to read a passage as we close here. This comes from the book of Romans in the New Testament. And the Apostle Paul had this to say in chapter 6, beginning in verse 22. But now, since you have been set free from sin and have become enslaved to God, you have your fruit which results in sanctification. And the outcome is eternal life. For the wages of sin is death, but the gift of God is eternal life in Christ Jesus, our Lord. That summarizes so well what the church is about. Receiving forgiveness of your sins, growing in your faith in Jesus Christ, and being pointed towards eternal life where you will forever bring honor and glory to God. We want you to be able to say those things are true of you, like we know they're true of everybody who's a member of this church. So, as we've said before, if you have any questions, we'd love for you to reach out. If you're watching on Facebook, just click that Contact Us button. If you're watching somewhere else, go to joinusatpvc.org and you can contact us through our website. And we would love to talk to you about a personal relationship with Jesus. Well, as I said, when you come, we want to say to you, welcome to church. Have a great week and I'll see you next time.